So the, uh, what the IPASS study uh, so far did is uh, they collected of a cohort of uh, more than 120 uh, hemophilia A patients, uh, uh, their demographics, uh, their treatment regimes, and uh, looked into uh, first uh, parameters uh, related uh, to uh, the, uh, let's say, the bioavailability and the pharmacokinetics of Fegrain. So uh, the study, for example, uh, could demonstrate something that had been assumed before based on available data, but now in a systematic way that von Willebrand factor levels influence factor 8 levels. We know von Willebrand factor is the chaperon protein that stabilizes factor 8 in the circulation. And here it could be shown that uh, von Willebrand factor levels correlate with uh, circulatory half-life. Same for age. The older the patient, the longer the half-life was. And the most striking result of the IPAS study was uh, that uh, the, uh, there was a correlation found uh, between uh, half-life and uh, prescribed dosages. So the shorter the half-life, the higher is the dose the patients would have been uh, prescribed. That's also something which would have been assumed before, but now this was first showed uh, systematically in a controlled uh, study situation. And then to come back to your question about the biomarkers, uh, the IPAS study does not stop with that. Uh, all the patients in the study uh, are um, uh, monitored for their specific phenotype and also for their genotype. So uh, we are acquiring uh, phenotypic and genomic data from the patients. Phenotypic means that uh, biomarkers are measured in the patients um, that are looking to uh, bone health, joint health, uh, inflammatory status, and body development. The goal here is, at the end, to uh, answer some key biological questions that are yet unsolved for hemophilia in patients. One question is, why do some patients uh, the same therapeutic prophylactic regime bleed and still so show some breakthrough bleeds and others do not? Why do some develop joint disease only having two or three bleeds and others never do? So this is unknown and must have uh, a reason in their uh, other biological factors that we are currently not understanding. And the aim of the study is to identify, identify those factors, also going back to genomic uh, information. So the genome uh, is sequenced of all the patients, and then there will be systematically looked into what determines a patient having low joint bleed towards a patient having a, a high frequency of joint bleeds. And then the ultimate question will also be why do some patients develop inhibitory antibodies and why uh, do uh, some patients not develop inhibitory antibodies against factor 8? And finally the PK question, why some having short half-lives, others having long half-lives? For this we have initial answers with the von Willebrand factor as I just explained before, but I think there is more to come. The study will last for uh, four years uh, and we are now uh, after 18 months, uh, so there's a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, the first time uh, that uh, things that had been known for a while are systematically investigated uh, relating to the influence factors of pharmacokinetics. Uh, it's also the first time uh, that uh, in a systematic way uh, population pharmacokinetics is used uh, to support uh, getting uh, data of such uh, patients. Um, the next steps uh, are the additional biochemical and the genetic work that will be done uh, in the next uh, two and a half years, and then the expansion uh, beyond Ireland. And then we probably could rename IPASS without changing the acronym, but I would then not stand for Irish but for international. <laughs>